during um, the last three years or so, inflation was above wages, which is bad. That means you're actually going backwards, Casey. You're going backwards. However, the last, I think, four months, five months, wages have started to exceed inflation by a meaningful amount. But this this still, this it takes time to kind of get to the other side of this, to pay off credit card debt. To, I mean, your, your tenant, we're making a wise financial move. I can't keep up with my bills. I have to trade down and shelter other than taxes. Shelter is often your biggest expense. So they probably didn't have a choice. We need to find 300 or $500 somewhere. And our only option is we got to lower our rent. And I think there's a lot of people making that choice. Folks, the economic data says we are not in a recession. In fact, we will get Q1 GDP tomorrow, and it will probably have a two, possibly a three handle on it. But you know what? I think the consumer, I think the average American probably feels like we're in a recession. Could this be called the silent recession? Maybe. We're going to have a great conversation with the one and only Casey from Brick by Brick, who's actually done a bunch of research on this. So Casey, thank you for being here. What'd you find? Thanks so much, Michael. I think that, you know, statistics can be swayed with in whatever direction the person who's making the statistics wants it to be. You know, it's it's all, I mean, that's just how it works, right? That's uh, people get push things, that's sales, that's everything. So it's like, how are we all feeling? Everybody that's watching this, we all have friends and family in real life. We feeling the economy is regardless of what the statistics on the recession stay and what the government says doesn't it feel like a recession to you it's harder to get raises harder to get jobs things cost more money we're washing our money more we're budgeting more we're like oh, I'm not sure if we should go out to eat today i don't know you know people are wary of moving up and buying homes we're not taking the splurges that we were taking several years ago when we had our covid money things are just a little different and to me it definitely feels like we're in a recession. I went and did some research before our call because it's something I really want to talk about today. And, you know, I want to be careful of all of the places I found my news, you know. I don't want right. anyone to slice my throat. So I found a lot of different places on both sides of the aisle. And the consensus was 60% of Americans feel that we are in a recession. 60%. Mm. That's most people are heavily affected by what is going on out there in the economy and they're feeling it at home in their pocketbooks. And that's an important metric, right? As somebody who has an econ degree, study the consumer for 30 years, um, when you breach that 50% mark and you get to most, right? 60% is most. Consumers can cause a recession all by themselves. This doesn't have to be the financial collapse like the GFC. This doesn't have to be the dot-com collapse of 2000. If consumers, and based on the data you found, 60% feel like in a recession, they will act accordingly. What does that mean, act accordingly? That means eating out less, splurging less. And if that happens in mass, the other thing you can learn about consumers is whether we like to admit it or not, we move as a herd. We all think we're individuals, individualistic, and sure you are. But in general, and the reason it, it benefits me studying the consumer is I can find where the herd is and frankly invest around it, which I've done in real estate for 30 years. Uh, but yeah, I think if we if real if 60% of Americans think we're in a recession, they're gonna act like it. And we'll see it. We're we're earning season starts in earnest this week. We will start getting retailers next week. And if this data is correct, we will see it in the earnings. Now, what does that mean? Because earnings could be manipulated. Earnings per share can be manipulated. Just watch the top line. Watch revenue. Earnings can be managed. Revenue can't. Let's see. I think you could be right. So I think, okay, and this popped into my mind when I had a, a tenant say, Casey, we're not going to renew our lease. And that never happens. You know, usually they renew or they buy a house. Um, mm -hmm. But he said, we're not going to renew our lease. Do you have anything cheaper? And I'm like, cheaper? And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, like, I mean, no, not right now, but why do you want something cheaper? It's just financially tough on us right now. We're not making as much money as we were doing, blah, 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 blah. 
and the rent he's paying is like around 1500 a month. Do you have anything 1200 a month? I'm like, wow, like that's a big cut. And I was like, no, but dude, you're not going to find anything in this type of area. You're going to have to go to an apartment complex, which is what he's going to do. So, okay. I'm thinking, all right, the investor in me thinks if we are in a recession, whether people want us, the government or whoever says we are or not, like you said, if the consumer feels that we're going to act accordingly. So if we're acting as if we're in a recession. We're watching our spending. We're not moving up the new homes. We're not spending more in a new rent, a better place because we can't afford it because we're scared. As an investor, I think, okay, I need to be, be conscious of that and make sure that maybe I'm not buying properties at the top rental market, maybe buying in the middle, you know, because I want there to be, a, I, you know, what's the, what is the, the status like, um, or the rule of thumb, um, something about three times um, the median, oh God, I forget, the uh, median yeah. income. Um, yep. three times the rent needs to be below the median income or something like right. that, right? Something so like that, that. Yep. everybody, most people can afford your, your rent. Well, in, in Memphis, where I invest, the median income is 900 a month. And my rental properties are, are well above that. So, so I, I want to make sure I heard that right. The median income in Memphis is $900 uh, a month? Rent, median rent, my bad, median I'm rent. I'm sorry, median I was going to say. Median rent. That makes sense. That's median better. rent is nine is nine hundred. So the median income is something about thirty four thousand dollars, something like that. It's okay. So let me just play that out because again, you said three x. So let's call it a thousand bucks times three, three thousand. So that means gross, yeah, thirty six grand. So the median yeah. income in Memphis is around forty grand. I had okay. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, and so then you want to make sure most people can afford your rent. So you should be buying places that are like around a thousand dollars. You know. Right. So when I have properties that are higher in rent like I have the one that's around 1500 and they're looking to downgrade into something around 1200. Well, how long might we be in this felt recession for? What's happening to our economy long-term? Is this going to be a trend that's going to cause rents to go down because the demand might not be there because people just don't have enough money for it. And that's the bottom yes. line. They're gonna move to apartment. They're gonna move to a not as nice part of the city. You know, there's always demand for housing, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just thinking like in a big yeah. scheme of things, if this were to go bad and let's say our economy is just in the toilet with mm -hmm. no recovery and it's getting yep. worse and worse yep. and the median income for my area is $36,000. Most people, they have to make three times the rent or they're not right. going to get in. We're right. looking at a $900 to $1,000 a month rental price. Correct. Most of my properties are above that, which I'd like because I want to keep more quality tenants and hopefully those ones will always keep a job. Right. But it's just something interesting to think about, like what happens if this does keep going down and you have tenants that are looking to downgrade because they're not they're not making enough money and things are just yeah. getting worse. Yeah, no. I, again, recessions are nasty. Um, you know, I've I've lived through, you know, several of them. Um, families will make hard choices. People will down select. They will pair up. They will move back with parents. They will uh, get roommates. Uh, it happens. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. And uh, we've I, seen that too in California yeah. and in Arizona and other places that are doing ADUs, multiple mm -hmm. families living in a home, because, you know, it can't be surprising, but the housing prices and the rents in some of these coastal and stuff areas are insane. And most people have a regular job. And when your rent is five to $7,000 a month and you work at a regular job making 65,000 a year, you cannot afford a $7,000 a month rent payment. So yeah. you live with your parents, you live with your sister, you have roommates, you have two families or multiple generations. And that's what kind of also off topic, but more and more cities are allowing multiple ADUs. Like that's mm -hmm. insane. They never had that when I was growing right. up. Nobody mm -hmm. needed that where you could afford a home. Um, something else I wrote down was that um, $1 today buys only 12% of what it could back in 1970. They've debased the currency 88%. That is wild. That is wild. I actually read something similar. Um, I think it was the dollar has gone down 20% in the last four years. That's wild. Doesn't it feel like, like it? It's crazy. Yeah. My Costco but I think, bill I, I, has gone from $200 to 400 when I go to Costco. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Food. I mean, if you look at some of the stats, and it's funny, we'll start to get retailer earnings report. I think Albertsons is first this week. It would be very interesting to see because what you a lot of times, again, from an economic perspective, there's this thing called switching costs. What is that? 
or tra- you can think of it as trading down in a recession. And Costco talks about this. I've read it in Costco reports for decades. They talk about beef and chicken, beef and chicken. In a good economy, they sell a lot more beef. In a bad economy, they sell more chicken, right? So protein is still being bought. People are just trading down. There's there's all kinds of things that consumers, again, 60% of folks feel like we're in recession. You could already see them changing their behavior and they're trading down to chicken. Costco's CFO talked about it in the last earnings announcement. This is happening. And you know, part of this is it just is. We printed eight, we shoved eight trillion or nine trillion dollars into the economy in four years. And in case you're wondering, that's a lot of money. And people felt generally good. Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, a lot of people weren't spending like they used to, right? You couldn't go anywhere. There were all these services, and suddenly you get we get checks mailed to you. Of course, you're gonna ball out. And of course, that leads to inflation. Um, but unfortunately, there's always a price to be paid, and it's uh, you know one's coming. You know whether we're in one. The economic data to this talk is not calling a recession, and it won't call a recession in Q1. But that doesn't stop con- consumers from acting like it, and they could cause again. Consumers are big enough to cause a recession all by themselves if we go that way. Absolutely. What I remember you saying in November. I remember we talked about this a little bit and you said something like um, we, or we discussed, I forget who said it. We would have been in a recession in November, but because of black Friday and shopping people putting stuff on their credit cards, it raised up, you know, what was it? GDP or sales. Mm -hmm. And so we were no longer in a recession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's very interesting. It's fake. Well, yes and no. Um, those sales, whether you buy it with cash or credit still count, mm-hmm. it's still revenue by the retailer. So it's not really fake, but I think what you're saying and you're accurate is we have record levels of credit card debt. We have rec- we have growing or very high levels of default. And again, back to the whole point of this, there's a price to be paid. And if your consumers and you're trading down from a $1,500 house to a $900 apartment, you probably have other bills. You probably have credit card bills that you have to pay for, and you just feel like you're drowning. People are drowning. If you're made, if that dude, I read a stat, I think it was like 68 or 72% of Americans can't cobble together $400 for a flat tire. Whoa. That's wild. Yeah. You know, one That's of my friends good. was, it was several years ago, not that long ago, five years ago or less. One of my friends was like, oh, my stove broke. And she was my neighbor. She's a good friend of mine. She, My stove broke. I'm like, well, you know, probably time for a new stove. Go get one. You yeah, know? You probably. Yeah. Like I, she was like, I don't know. I don't really have a thousand bucks for a stove. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, it, you don't have a thousand dollars for a stove? Yeah. Stoves are kind of important, right? Just going to microwave all your food. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, but it's, it's wild. It's um, the consumer. I think it is very clear. The consumer is stretched. Mm-hmm. And you know the really, really, I mean, this just hit me. I've been talking about a bifurcated housing market. We really have a bifurcated consumer. What does that mean? I don't know if people know this. The top 20% of income earners make up 50% of discretionary spending. Wow. Think about it. So that means 80% of consumers make up the other half. And the top 20%, they own assets. And in an environment where there's inflation, assets go up. So they're doing fine. The other 80% who are living check to check, who don't have assets or not enough, who are, I mean, it's it's tough. It's getting hard. And yeah. we do have we do have a little bit of silver line. And this is very small, but I'm encouraged by it. During um the last three years or so, inflation was above wages, which is bad. That means you're actually going backwards, Casey. You're going backwards. However, the last, I think, four months, five months, wages have started to exceed inflation by a meaningful amount. But this this still, this it takes time to kind of get to the other side of this, to pay off credit card debt. So, I mean, your, your tenant... We're making a wise financial move. I can't keep up 
with my bills. I have to trade down and shelter other than taxes. Shelter is often your biggest expense. So they probably didn't have a choice. We need to find 300 or $500 somewhere. And our only option is we got to lower our rent. And I think there's a lot of people making that choice. Do you think maybe the increase in wages has anything to do with the California minimum wage going to $20 an hour? Oh, uh, that certainly will show up next month. It just yeah. happened. So these these are historic numbers. Um, it's going to show up for sure. I mean, but it'll be 0.1, 0.2%. It won't be meaningful and it won't be meaningful long term. I think I just, you know, I think wages, I think wages have to play catch up. That's how this whole system works. Yeah. You know, the consumer yeah. has been just the consumer has been beaten for the last four years with with inflation and scarcity Point. and all of that. Oh, yeah. God. We've got Under. materials cost more, you know. Um, so if you let's say you are a brick and mortar store owner and you're going to pay your general manager a higher salary and that's maybe part of the wages are increasing. Yeah, well, yeah. how how when your rents are probably going up for the space that you're staying in mm -hmm. when all huh. your materials cost more insurance. How about insurance? insurance. I don't know about you. Crazy insurance. Right? Oh my crazy. God. And my home insurance for all my houses, like car insurance. Crazy. Yeah. I need yeah. to get more quotes. I need time to switch insurance companies. From yeah. Because yeah. But I, I think I, I, my home insurance. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah I think, I, I think uh, one, one of my home insurance was, uh, I got a new bill for 11 million free bedroom, one bathroom in Memphis. And I'm like, dude, it used to be like $500, 450 bucks, yeah, just yeah. several, like a few years ago for home insurance. And it has like yeah. more than yeah. doubled. In yeah, my, just, my, my insurance went up 80%. Um, wow. And it, yeah, across the board, it was, it was wild. Um, but I think your point, you know, this topic is the, I'm going to say the government and I'm not, I'm not talking president. I'm talking the overarching government. They're putting out a lot of economic metrics like GDP. It'll come out tomorrow. It'll be a positive number for sure. It could be 3%. They're talking about the unemployment rate sub 4%. But the economy can't be healthy if 60% of the folks think we're in a recession. This, th those things just don't jive. It's yeah. wild. We'll have to make more money. And I don't really, I mean, if you're saying people are getting paid more, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, you know, with my husband's job or, you know, any of my friends out there, no one has, you know, it's always more, it's been more negative in recent, mm -hmm. you know, this oh, past sure. recent year. As we're not getting our raises, um, we're, you know, so-and-so got laid off, so many layoffs. And I know mm -hmm. that was this past year, but um, it is, if there is a catch up, it's wages will have to go up significantly. The cost oh. of housing, ridiculous. I mean, I was talking to one of my students in um, Instagram chat just a few minutes ago. And she said that, I think she said, New York will allow you to have a 46%, 46 to 48% of your income can go towards a mortgage payment. Oh my goodness. That's not okay. Talk about, talk about putting yourself in a hole right there. Half of your gross income, not even your take home. Half your gross can go, they allow it to go towards a mortgage payment. What about the rest of your life? I mean, rising credit card debt, credit cards, debt, um, credit card in interest is through the roof. It's ridiculous. Yep. It's not fair. You know, no, there's this not. middle class trap that we're all in and mm -hmm. it's not getting any better when we all feel like we're in a recession. All righty. Let's try to, let's try to, uh, let's try to pull out of this, this, uh, this doom loop here. And tell people uh, some things they should do. What should, what should they do? If they feel like they're in a recession, what, what's one or two things? Let's let's each come up with one or two things we would tell our friends. You, you got a friend that comes to you. They're they're in a financial bind. They're stressed. What what are you telling them? And you know, actually, Michael, I did my inst my uh, Instagram post was on this today. Awesome. And I put ten things you can do in the caption on today's post. Um, but anyways. One thing I think is really important is open up your credit cards and it's so easy and find out where are all your recurring payments. It's so mm. easy for a subscription here and there, here and there. Cancel all that crap. You got extra cards. You only need one car per adult. Sell a car. Do you have um, big toy payments, RVs, boats, whatever? Dude, get rid of that. If you're drowning and you're in a hole, we need to get rid of big payments. And I'm not saying don't, you know, skip your Starbucks coffee. 
that's, you know, menial. Let's take care of some big stuff and really look inside of ourselves and say, how can I get from where I am today to be having enough money to save to invest in real estate so I can get out of this hole and continue my amazing lifestyle? Because you're not going to be able to do it paying credit card debt and maxing yourself out with the housing payment. Yeah, if you're if you're like in that situation, you're drowning. Um, I don't agree with everything Dave Ramsey says, but Dave Ramsey has this book. I think it's called Money Makeover. I think that's what it's called. Something like that. You'll look it up. Dave Ramsey. In yeah. uh, Debt Snowball, all these things, folks. The first rule is to stop digging. Right. The other thing you can remember is if you have credit card debt and you're paying 22 percent. You pay that off. You've just made 22 percent. Change your mindset. If you have credit card debt. You shouldn't be investing. Like if you're carrying 22% a month on credit cards, stop buying stock, stop buying crypto, stop, just stop, yeah. pay that stuff off. That's a 22% return right now. Um, and the other thing I would tell you is this is normal. I've been studying the economy for 30 years. I've researched it all the way back to 1970. So 54 years, business cycles come and go. The bull markets usually run eight to 12 years. The bear market recession, nine months to two years. So we're in it. Whether it's official or not, we're here. Don't don't run away and hide. Don't stick your head in the sand. That 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 never gets better. I believe in you. I think you can do it. Um, but yeah, that's what that's my word of advice. Casey, where can people go to find this great list of 10 things? They can find it on today's, well, today's the 22nd. I don't know when this will come out, but it's on today's Instagram post. Um, it's a picture of me and my, at my pool. Ah. Um, you can find that list today. And then on Instagram, Brick by Brick Wealth. And you can find me every Thursday on YouTube. I put out a new video, Brick by Brick Wealth. Awesome. You are awesome, Casey. Thank you very much. Have a great day.